Hello. Uh, my goal in these presentations is one thing, to help you capture compelling underwater images while avoiding many of the mistakes and missed opportunities that I have made over my career. Um, let's get right to the next one. This is step number four, what to shoot or subject selection. One thing that isn't really appreciated for, by underwater photography is that there is such limited time. First, most dives last between 30 minutes and an hour. We get all of our equipment, we get in the water. We have to spend time monitoring our dive parameters, our air supply, our buoyancy. We have to look at where our dive buddy is. We have to navigate. We have to look at our depth. We have to uh, fool around with our camera equipment, okay, and our dive equipment. Then we have to find a suitable subject to photograph. Once we find a subject, then we have to slowly approach it without scaring it away. Then we have to figure out a way how we're going to compose the picture. We take a few test shots, we check our histogram, we go in a little closer. Uh, there is just very limited time. If one thing goes wrong with our dive equipment, if we're not familiar with our camera equipment, it's very easy for things to unravel and you've done the whole dive without any good pictures. So let's show some examples here. Okay, so realizing the limited time, the time that we have, it is so important in selecting a subject. In fact, subject selection, what do we pick to photograph, is probably the single most important thing that distinguishes great underwater photographers from mediocre underwater photographers. I'm going to show a few examples. In 2005, I had a two-tank dive trip in Isla Morada, and these were the best pictures I got from that trip. My goal was to shoot everything, to take a picture of everything I could find. I took a picture of my dive buddy. I found a, a, a moray eel that looked beautiful. I fired a couple shots. I chased after a, eagle, a spotted eagle ray, took a shot. I took another shot of my other dive buddy. I found a trumpet fish, took a couple shots. I swam over and found these um, angel fishes, photographed them. This is a two, two dives, got a couple pictures of a trunk fish. Got a picture of a lot of different pictures of a lot of different subjects, okay? None of them were really very good, all right? My mindset changed over the years. And what I do now is try to find a good subject, something that's approachable, something that has good negative space where I will not damage the reef and I can take my time and take pictures. Here's an example of a one morning, two dives in Bonaire. On one of the trips, I took some pictures of a few other things, but I found this beautiful scorpion fish that hid under a ledge. I must have spent 25 or 30 minutes with this uh, porcupine fish, not necessarily harassing it. I would swim away, take pictures of an adjacent rock or something else, let the fish come out and let me photograph them. And I took about 30 or 40 shots over that period of time, and I kept a couple of what I considered were the best ones, a portrait shot and a very nice macro picture of its eye. And that was the, those were the two pictures I saved from that dive. The second dive on that two-tank dive trip in Bonaire, I spent most of the time following around a few squid, and I saved three of the shots. The uh, squid, a shot of its cornea, and another shot of its eye. One dive in Grand Cayman just a, a year ago, I spent most of the entire dive with this beautiful green moray eel. I took a few shots, it hit, it came out, it went under the rock, it came out, it came, disappeared, it came out another ledge. It allowed me to get close to it, and I ended up with what I thought were a couple of nice portrait shots, which you can see here and here, and I even got a close-up of its eye. To summarize, subject selection is so important, and that's going to end this one. You can download this outline for free on my website. The next series will be number five shooting your subject. Thank you.